Today, we're going to look at the effects of SARMs, whether or not they are harmful to humans, and also whether they shrink your dink. So SARMs, what are they? Invented in the 1990s, SARMs are often thought of as something that are sort of like steroids, in that SARMs and steroids both act on androgen receptors in the body to promote muscle growth and improve athletic performance. The thing about SARMs is that they aren't exactly like steroids, which gives the user the impression that they might be safer. Might being the key word here. Question is, are they? They're, I think, advertised as being like steroids and that they promote some of the same effects of steroids without as many side effects, apparently. You see, SARMs have been designed to be more selective in their actions, targeting specific tissues like muscle and bone while avoiding others, which may reduce the risk of negative side effects associated with traditional steroids. With SARMs... Now, once the testosterone binds to this receptor, the receptor changes and that change instigates action that basically ramp up muscle protein synthesis. So we have various receptors, such as the NR3C4 androgen receptors, which bind testosterone and help to promote the development and the maintenance of male characteristics, such as increased muscle mass, strength, and bone density. This binding involves several steps. First, the testosterone or SARM molecule binds to a specific pocket within the androgen receptor, causing a structural change in the receptor that enables it to bind to coactivator proteins and DNA in the nucleus of the cell. This then triggers a cascade of biochemical reactions that ultimately lead to the activation of specific genes involved in male characteristic development. The selectivity of SARMs in binding to androgen receptors is determined by the chemical structure of the compound itself. As I mentioned earlier, SARMs are designed to selectively target androgen receptors in muscle and bone tissue, muscles and bones, while avoiding receptors in other tissues such as the prostate gland. This is achieved through subtle differences in the chemical structure of the SARM molecule, which allow it to bind more strongly to certain androgen receptors than to others. Bones! Bill. Muscles! Uh, Bill. SARM! You see, it's all about the shapes that molecules form. Some shapes are more versatile, with an ability to bind to many different receptors, while others are less so, with correspondingly lower binding affinity or more specialized binding affinity. And when a one approaches two, they combine in their bonding. Sounds promising, right? The first SARM, or Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, to be developed was Osterine also known as MK2866 or Enobosarm. Osterine was initially developed by the pharmaceutical company GTX in the late 1990s with the goal of developing a drug to treat muscle wasting and osteoporosis. With muscle wasting conditions, muscle tissue is lost or becomes less robust, resulting in a loss of muscle mass and strength. It can occur as a result of malnutrition, age, genetics, a lack of physical activity, or certain medical conditions. Osteoporosis describes a condition where the normal balance between bone creation and bone resorption is weighted in favor of bone resorption. Over time, bone density is lost, leading to weakened bones that are more susceptible to fracture. SARMs are able to provide direct benefit to these patients by increasing bone mineral density, cortical content, and bone strength, as well as the protein synthesis involved in muscle hypertrophy. Osterine is a non-steroidal SARM that selectively targets androgen receptors in muscle tissue and bone, with minimal effects on other tissues in the body. The word target here means that Osterine specifically aims to bind and interact with androgen receptors located in muscle tissue and bone, while minimizing its interaction with receptors in other tissues throughout the body. This selective targeting is, again, what makes Osterine and other SARMs potentially useful in treating specific conditions without causing negative side effects in other parts of the body. It was first tested in humans in the early 2000s and has since been the subject of numerous clinical trials. As these drugs are still being actively researched, those who currently use them are potentially research subjects accumulating data on their use, and at times, their unexpected side effects. New drugs often get tested for first in human safety purposes, not to see if they cure anybody, just to see if they have any side effects. 
One of the undesirable side effects includes gynecomastia, which this guy unfortunately experienced. According to an article in US Pharmacology 2020, SARMs are investigational drugs, and although they have been studied for more than 20 years, none have currently received FDA approval, even for conditions in which the benefits might outweigh any significant risks. Much of the evidence regarding the performance enhancing benefits and overall safety of SARMs is anecdotal, rather than founded on scientific investigation. The few clinical investigations of SARMs have identified heart attack, stroke, and liver damage as potentially serious health risks. Okay, so obviously that's a problem. Add to that, there is the way in which SARMs are used. In the International Journal of Impotence Research, December 2022, they state that a study done in 343 mostly men between the ages of 18 and 29, more than 90% of users acquired SARMs via the internet and did not consult with a physician. More than half of SARMs users experienced side effects, including mood swings, decreased testicular size, and acne. More than 90% of men reported increased increased muscle mass and were satisfied with their SARMs usage. Despite having seemingly positive effects, more than 50% of SARMs users report significant adverse effects. If you're into bodybuilding, you've probably heard of SARMs or selective androgen receptor modulators. Yes, thanks King Kamali of Generation Iron. SARMs is a buzzword in gym locker rooms that have been quite prominent for the past few years. Where are my SARMs, man? Does it look like I use them? Look at your buddy, yeah, he has you're right. them. You're, you're pretty smart. Oh, right here, boss, yeah, my are. bad. You should probably use these. Sketch. Enter athletes, both elite and recreational, as well as fitness enthusiasts and even regular Joes, all looking to be bigger and stronger or as fast as possible. No doubt there are societal pressures for men, just as there are for women. They want to look good as much as women do. And especially in this, I need it now and with as little effort as possible, bro, culture. Don't care how I want it now. One can see the attraction. And SARMs are fairly easy to use if you can get them. They come in pill, powder, and liquid form. But let's be clear about what SARMs are and what they are not. According to the Government of Canada, Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, or SARMs, are drugs that are not authorized in Canada for any use and have not been reviewed by Health Canada for safety, effectiveness, and quality. SARMs may only be imported by registered drug manufacturers, practitioners, and pharmaceutical companies for research purposes only. Having said that, there are bodybuilding products that are sold online and in retail stores that are often marketed and labeled as dietary supplements, when in fact, they are not. Oftentimes, these products contain hidden ingredients that may be harmful and or unapproved drugs. SARM ingredients have been found in dietary supplements, bodybuilding, and other product labels under various names. These include, but are not limited to the following. Andarine, S4, Osterine, MK2866, Carterine, GW501516, Astatine, LDG4033, MK677, RAD140, and YK11. So if they're not technically legal for consumer use, what about athletes? Can they use SARMs? According to WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, SARMs are prohibited at all times, both in and out of competition, for all athletes, from those competing at the highest level of sport to those competing at the recreational level. SARMs are listed in the category of other anabolic agents under section S1.2 of the water prohibited list. Well, if water prohibits their use, then they must offer some sort of advantage then, correct? A 2019 study published in the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry found that treatment with a SARM called GW501516 led to significant improvements in body composition and endurance performance in obese mice. Other studies have suggested that SARMs such as MK2866 and LGD4033 may also have potential for promoting fat loss and improving body composition. Yet other studies show that they have direct benefits in those with osteoporosis and muscle wasting conditions. For example, the Deccan Herald, while not necessarily known for their medical specialization and also an affiliate, it seems, said in January 2023, according to one study, postmenopausal women who take Osterine for three months can see an increase in lean muscle mass and a loss of fat. Osterine is the best thing women can do since there is no androgenic activity. While this info may be true, be wary of anyone who has affiliate links to SARMs in the article. It's day nine on SARMs. I just put the SARMs on my sushi. Let's go. Now, 
At this point, it's worth reiterating that SARMs are indeed a class of drug. Wait, what's that 240p McGruff the crime dog? Don't use drugs, don't use drugs. Well, thank you McGruff, you are obviously well intentioned, but I think we can offer a more nuanced perspective. Many drugs are crucial in today's world to alleviate all sorts of pain and symptoms, as well as fulfill other needs. Of course, McGruff was alluding to more hard street drugs, such as in 2023, stuff like fentanyl or Trank. I just want to shake some sense into you kids that are using drugs and think about using Fentanyl, for one, is a drug that I, as a surgeon, also use. See my video on that. But again, it's under supervised setting with appropriately selected patients and all while closely monitored. According to Muscle and Fitness, who you'd think would be a reliable source, right? The best SARMs for muscle growth are Testol 140, Ligand 4033, Ibuta 677, Radbulk, and Ligabulk. But wait, these guys are affiliates. Aren't they going to be biased based on what they sell? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. But watch out. SARMs are apparently everywhere, each with their own distinct characteristics, benefits, and potential downsides. That said, there are many more than what has been discussed here, and yet others under development, all with varying degrees of study allocated to them. You pick what you're trying to accomplish by taking the SARMs, and then go online and read a bunch of stuff written by some guy at a gym, or maybe pseudoscientifically, but certainly not studied enough, pick your drug or drugs because you'll likely be stacking and figure out using the same method we just discussed exactly how much you're going to take and when. Go eat a ton of carbs, uh -huh. take four capsules with your carb meal, and watch. And then of course, there are side effects like the lowering of testosterone, which some fitness peeps recommend addressing with a cycle of other drugs. So even if you suppress your natural testosterone, the SARMs replace it, all the benefits of it, so you don't even notice your testosterone is lower, usually. To be decided upon again, based on the above stated method, and then you have to take those and try to get yourself back to normal, and then when you are, you start all over again. Hoping to God and the powers that be that along with this the proper so workout routine that hopefully you can it. stick to, you will indeed be the specimen that you hoped you'd become. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work and uncertainty to me. Some of the side effects that have been attributed to SARMs include gynecomastia, steroid acne, aka malacia folliculitis, cholestatic liver disease, and cardiac dysfunction. Concerning gynecomastia, the NIH says gynecomastia is a common situation with a proliferation of glandular component of male breast secondary to an imbalance in sexual hormones in mammary tissue. A main cause of gynecomastia is anabolic steroid consumption. You're artificially giving yourself more testosterone or androgens, and this results in your body freaking out, being like, yo! Malaysia folliculitis is a particular kind of acne which presents as itchy papules and pustules on the chest and back as a result of the malacia fungal infection. Cholestatic liver disease is a type of liver injury that affects the bile ducts and can cause symptoms such as itching, fatigue, and jaundice. And some SARMs have been found to increase the thickness of the left ventricular wall, also known as left ventricular hypertrophy, which is the muscular wall that separates the left side of the heart from the rest of the body. All of these problems are unfavorable and seem to affect the same structures, heart, the liver, muscles, etc., that are negatively affected by anabolic steroids. So you may want to consider that similarity before including SARMs as part of your muscle building regimen. Ah, now, but what about the... You mean shrink it? Yes! Some studies have suggested that the use of anabolic steroids can have negative effects on sexual function, including a reduction in penis size. Significant shrinkage. Another study has suggested that SARMs such as Osterine, Rad140, and Carterine can cause a reduction in libido and promote impotence. Sex has nothing to do with but the evidence for SARMs is inconclusive in many respects as to exactly what side effects there are and how severe they can be. So technically, the only evidence that SARMs shrink the penis is a low level, and we have no definitive answer to share with you. But keep in mind, some of the other side effects sound just as concerning, if not more so. And at the very least, there is a correlation between sexual health and SARMs much like steroids. So while it may not shrink your dink, there's no conclusive proof that it doesn't. And that might be enough to steer some folks away from SARMs overall.
It shrinks? <laughs> like a frightened turtle. If you enjoyed this breakdown of SARMs, be sure to check out my video about the possible effects of getting swole AF with steroids and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like the video, be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.